All right, everyone. Welcome to the May 23rd, 2019 work session of the Penfield Planning Board. Allison, please call the roll. Hudson? Here. Bastian? Here. Knauer? Here. Burchin? Here. Nursinger? Here. Sangster? Here. O'Connor? Here. I cut off. <laughs> I really cut off. Blend All right. We have uh, meeting minutes from the uh, May 9th meeting. Hopefully everybody's had an opportunity to review them. I have. I'd like to make a motion to accept okay. the meetings. Okay. Got a second. Gotcha. Burton and Bastion. Hetsky. Aye. Bastion. Aye. Burton. Aye. Knauer. Aye. <coughs> All right, Zach, would you like to go through our table items and action items for the evening? I'd love to. Uh, in the sake of time, I know Bill has to be out of here by a certain time tonight. Um, first thing I wanted to jump to, um, kind of going off script from the agenda, is our sketch plan application uh, for the Heritage Christian Services Daycare proposed at 2730 Atlantic Avenue. Okay. Uh, since the board last met, that was your uh, public hearing discussion for the sketch plan application. It's the second round of the sketch plan uh, for the proposed daycare. And the result of that um, was there was a lot of questions and concerns from the board members we had here that evening about um, traffic in general, about existing conditions of this intersection uh, at Atlantic, Scribner, Wayland, uh, all controlled by the state DOT, um, and how it all interacts with the middle school to the north, and what potential impacts may a daycare have at that intersection in relation to the existing traffic. Uh, as the applicant presented, they did present, they did have a traffic impact study prepared by SRF uh, that was available during the meeting. Uh, there were still some questions uh, about the contents and the findings of that impact study, and I believe they are here tonight in the audience. And uh, one of our um, requests from that meeting was that they be here to answer any questions from the board or perhaps to present um, a, a brief summary of the impact study mm -hmm. and uh, just kind of give a, a, a synopsis of what's there that wasn't truly, that was still left uh, kind of unknown or more uh, information was wanted at the meeting last, last time, so. Yeah, clarifying some of the questions. Correct. Um, so I'll leave that up to you, AJ, and board members if yeah. you want to bring them up. Do you want to come up for a couple minutes and Give us a, uh, yeah. a little bit more detailed summary. Sorry, I didn't count. We need another chair. <laughs> Dan, Dan knows. So, Dan knows. <laughs> Just we don't want to get too, too lengthy. But. No. Uh, well, I've asked Amy to, to give a short summary okay. synopsis statement, and then we can dive in as, as much as you like. Okay. Um, the other thing that uh -huh. I'm sure you all received was the... Uh, letter from B&L, yes. that's the town yes. engineer review letter, um, which I thought was a very fine letter, uh, given the fact it totally supported what our report was. <laughs> um, right. But, but I, with that, I will simply let Amy uh, okay. uh, uh, go through, and again, we're happy to answer any questions. Do you want me to actually go through a few minutes about what the report entails and everything that we did, or do you feel comfortable with that and just want me to answer questions? I think a three-minute summary. Yeah, yeah okay. if you could do a three-minute sure. uh, review. Sure, absolutely. Summary. Um, summary. So a typical traffic study starts out with looking at existing conditions. So the first thing we did was actually um, compile traffic counts at the intersection. So that was done Wednesday, May 9th of last year, um, 2018. So being that this is a daycare center and we have the school right adjacent to the site, mm -hmm. um, we looked at the 7 to 9 morning commuter peak time, and then 2.30 to 6 o'clock, which is a little outside of what we normally do. Normally we look at 4 to 6, which is the commuter peak, but because we have the school, we stretched that out to 2.30 because we wanted to make sure we captured everything. So within those time frames, we then identify the actual peak hour, because what we actually analyze is a one hour time period. So those peak hours were 7.15 to 8.15 in the morning and 4.30 to 5.30 at night, which is kind of what we would expect for a commuter peak. So what you don't see here is that the school peak. So what that means is that the traffic during the school peak is slightly less than 
the traffic vehicle. during the actual commuter peak. Okay? okay? Which is interesting because with a daycare center, the actual peaks for the daycare center are going to coincide more with the commuter peak than with the school mm -hmm. peaks. Mm -hmm. So you see an overlap in the morning, but not in the evening. Um, so the next step in the process is then to develop a background condition because the project, once it's built, will be a year from now. And as you know, you've got other projects in the area that have, may have been approved by the board or are under construction that wouldn't have been included in the traffic, the traffic counts. Okay, so we included the Windsor Ridge subdivision. And then we also included a growth rate on top of that just to account for anything else that we didn't know about at the time that we did the study. Um, then we look at the actual land use, which in this case is a daycare center. A lot of times we'll use Institute of Transportation Engineers data to um, actually project what we expect the future trips to be from the land use. In this case, they have two other local sites in the Rochester area. So we were able to get really good local information on the daycare center, exactly what their procedures are, how many Similar people they expect. Operation. Exactly. So that's how we projected the future trips for that. Um, then we look at the layout of the driveways and how much traffic goes in every direction on the various roadways, whether it's Atlantic or Scribner or Wayland, to see where traffic is going to be going to and coming from. So that's our distribution. So you'll see a figure in our report that has percentages on it. That's where the trips are going to and coming from during the various peak times. <coughs> So this site in particular, we expect in the morning, we're going to have 43 entering trips and 36 exiting trips. And in the evening peak, it's going to be 50 entering and 56 exiting. So when you and the difference AM, there, go ahead. You say the AM peak is for a one hour period? Correct. During the peak commuter travel? Correct. Okay. Yeah. That's not total. What do you mean? Um, Number from first. 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. No, 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 no. This is just, this is one just hour the one-hour peak. Snapshot. Right, okay. right. So, as you know, I mean, as a parent, you are you may have to be at work at, who knows when. You might have to be at work at 7 o'clock in the morning. Maybe you don't have to be at work until 9 o'clock in the morning. So that's why there's a wide range of when parents are dropping off and picking up mm -hmm. their children. You know, maybe you get out of work at 4 o'clock. Maybe you don't get out until 5.30, you know. So then that's why the actual trips don't necessarily coincide with the number of children at the daycare center. Okay? Um, so then we add all that together and we do what's called uh, a capacity analysis at the intersection. So we have a software called Synchro that does that for us. It looks at the signal timings, it looks at how much traffic is on the roadway, it looks at um, the peaking characteristics. So if you have more traffic coming in a 15 minute period versus spread out throughout the whole hour. So it looks at a whole range of things and then it comes up with a letter grade for the intersection. A being the, the least amount of delay, F being the worst, kind of like your grades in school, right? Um, and so what we see with this intersection in the morning, we've got some levels of service E's and D's on the side roads. That's pretty typical on a heavy road like Atlantic, um, even with the signal. And the way New York State DOT tends to um, time their traffic signals is they obviously favor their own roadway more and cause more delays at the side roads. It's just the way they do things. So that's why you see this, and you'll see A's and B's for the traffic on Atlantic. So all the way through here. Um, we do have uh, the same levels of service once we have our full build conditions at the intersection, we see a little bit of a drop um, <coughs> between background and existing, but not really any, any changes at all for um, the full build conditions at the intersection. And then at the two proposed driveways, those are unsignalized, so they're going to be stop controlled exiting the driveways. So we've got B's and C's on the driveway on Scribner and then B's, C's, and D's on the driveway on Atlantic. So because we know that Atlantic has a lot of traffic and we have some congestion at times here, we also did a couple other, th other things with this study. One was a Q analysis. Can I stop you there for a yeah, second? Yeah, absolutely. Can we go back? You're, you're talking about this area yep. right here? Yep. And can you just back up for me and explain the, uh, the numbers again? So mm -hmm. you have in column, let's call it the first column, the AM yep. and the Atlantic Avenue 
through and right and left turns, looks okay. like, are A's. Yes. And the numbers there are 6.4 or 4.6. That is, what does that number represent? That's the average delay for a in car seconds. making that movement in, in seconds. seconds. So, so the E mm -hmm. for northbound left on Whalen Road is basically a minute. A minute, yep. Yeah. And northbound right, southbound left, and southbound through right are 38 seconds, basically. So the worst right. case scenario currently is northbound left during that peak hour. Correct. Um, yep. Because if you think about it, um, I don't know off the top of my head, the signal probably operates on about a 90 second cycle, anywhere from 90 to 120 seconds. So if you pull up at the end of green on Whalen Road, you're northbound, you want to turn left, mm -hmm. and the signal just turns red as you're pulling up, you're going to have to wait a good 60 seconds just for the traffic on Atlantic until that signal so, changes to green again. So you're on Atlantic heading east, and you want to turn left northbound on Scribner. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to wait for the westbound traffic. Mm -hmm. So you're going to wait almost a full signal. But what that is is uh, eastbound left. That's the eastbound left. left. Which that's in the morning, yeah, six six point four seconds. Yeah, that's on average over the course of the hour. And that. So you're gonna wait. It's basically you're waiting for a gap in the westbound traffic yeah. at that point in time. To cross. <coughs> right. Yeah. And so, your assumption or the study findings are that that northbound left on Wayland goes from sixty seconds to seventy four seconds say yes now you also need to look at the so it's 15 that, seconds more well you mm -hmm. need to look at the interim step the background conditions because the background <clears throat> conditions are going to occur whether this project moves forward or not so we always compare our full build condition to background okay okay so it's still an increase but it's less than 10 seconds right okay got it because yeah. the background condition is 64.7 seconds yeah. right okay all right. So, I, I have sense. one question. These blocks <coughs> here and here, that's coming out of the daycare? It's the, it's the driveway itself. So um, if you look at it, this is, see how it says eastbound Atlantic Avenue? Right. So that's going to be the left turn turning in. And then okay. southbound proposed okay. driveway is going to be coming out of the driveway. Okay. So it's both, but it's, it's both. yeah, it's taking into account the left turn into the driveway. Which is, when you have an unsignalized intersection and you're on your main line, that's really the only movement that's going to have any delay is the left turns, because mm -hmm. throughs and rights are pretty much moving pretty. freely, right? Yep. So, and then you have delay coming out of your driveway. So you're anticipating that if, at the end of the day when people pick their kids up, that's turning onto Atlantic out of the driveway, that bottom right be yes. at 30 seconds. Yes. So we're going to wait 30 seconds for a gap in the traffic. Yep. To, to now, out. that's an average. And right. because this driveway only has one exiting lane, it's an mm -hmm. average of the delay for a left turn and a right turn. Obviously, a right turn is going to have less delay. Sure. Right? So that's why um, intuitively you would think it's going to be worse and the delay is going to be longer, but it's an average of both of those. Movements. Okay. 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 Yep. So the other two uh, analyses that we provided with the study were a Q analysis and a gap analysis. So I'll talk about the gap analysis first since we're talking about the driveways. The gap analysis goes out and it measures the actual time between the cars on Atlantic as they're driving. Okay, so we actually time how much time is there between this car and, and the, the next, next set of cars, right? Because you need a certain amount of time to actually make a movement out of the driveway safely. Because mm -hmm. you have to merge with traffic, cross traffic, that kind of a thing. So the gap study showed that there's well sufficient gaps for the traffic to actually turn in and out of that driveway. So we want to make sure that people can do that and they're not going to have, you know, a time period where they're going, I don't have enough time to make this turn, and then they do something dumb. That's the last thing we want to see. 
So we wanted to make sure that we have enough time for those motorists to get in and out of the driveways, and they do. So the other thing that I mentioned was the queue study. Um, so we looked at the southbound queuing on Scribner because we know that that traffic at times is going to block the driveway. Mm -hmm. So if you look at um, the next page after the um, capacity analysis, page 7 in the report, mm -hmm. you'll see a couple of bar, bar graphs. Um, and hopefully you guys have it in color. Mine's in black and white, but yes. <laughs> it's fine. I Thank you. Spared no expense um, on this report. <laughs> <laughs> so the orange color is the southbound through and right turn lane. Those are combined in one lane. And then there's a separate left turn lane. The blue is the left turn lane. Okay. So there's a little bit fewer left turns. So there's not as much of a cue from that. But there's definitely a cue from the southbound through and right turn lane. Then you'll see two other black lines that go all the way across. The lighter lines are um, the averages of those. And then the very dark line is the location of the driveway. Now these two graphs are on different scales because there was um, more traffic in the morning than in the evening peak. So that's why it looks like the driveway is in a different location, but it's not. So basically about um, seven to 10 cars will, will block the driveway, okay? And you can see that in the morning, that happens for about a 20 minute period, the driveway will be blocked. So it'll be difficult to get out of that driveway. But motorists, the drivers have the option of using the Atlantic driveway. Is that, and you're talking say 751 through 809 or something? Yep, That's, exactly, okay. exactly. And then in the evening, <coughs> it's hardly blocked at all because we don't have the school traffic coming out. That's all mm -hmm. done already when we have our peak, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so two things I want to mention. One is that we did include school buses. We counted all the school buses um, at the intersection in every direction, and the queue analysis takes into account the school buses as well. And the second thing that I want to mention is that when we did our trip generation, and I mentioned the 40 and 50 numbers, how many mm -hmm. cars would be going in and out during the peak, that's absolutely the driveway number. But one thing that this study did not take into account, because we try to be conservative and look at a worst case, is what we call pass-by trips. So a lot of times with a daycare center, we see as much as a 50% pass-by rate. And what that means is that people that are already on Atlantic, they go back and forth on Atlantic every day to go to work. And now you build this daycare center, they're going to put their kids in this daycare center because it's already on their way to work. So they're already part of the traffic anyway. And we didn't right. account just for that. Stopping. Got it. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. All right. So when you say the driveway is going to be blocked during this period of time in the morning mm -hmm. from 751 to 8 or 9 or whatever, what's the average wait for a car to pull out into the traffic? So that's um and then you had it back here. Yeah. You said it's going to be blocked. Yeah, but every time the traffic signal cycles, that traffic clears out. So that's when you can get out of the driveway. Or they can use the driveway on Atlantic. Well, how long will it wait? If I'm third in line to get out, there's two cars in the way. Um, well, I mean, according to this, it's Scribner westbound left. It's 13 seconds on average. Per car? Yes, per car, mm -hmm. yes. Yep, on average. So some people might have to wait a little longer. Some people might hit the light just right and be able to pull right out. Okay. But, you know, I mean, when you're dropping off your child on, and you're on your way to work and you have to be at work at a certain time, if you start coming here and you find that you're running into a problem with the traffic, you're going to adjust your schedule and drop your child off a little earlier. Right. That's um, a nice explanation. It, you know, when you're a lay person, you look at the stuff and you, you think you know what you're looking right. at, but yep. it definitely helps. The, um, <clears throat> the number of trips you said that was based on uh, history from some of the other centers? Yes, two okay. other centers, yep. Um, 
I was just thinking what the sensitivity would be with the results if it was plus minus 10%. But I think you stating that you did not account for the cars that would already be in the mix. Right. So I think right. that would probably <clears throat> put these more on, you know, more conservative. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. They can't. They can't change their occupant load. That's regulated by a state agency. They, they can't just decide they're going to take in ten more kids a day. Oh, I realize that. But the the trip. <coughs> I'm saying these these numbers are based on some prior, but they're could be some differences. There's going to be a variation in that number. Well, if the if the occupant load of the other two facilities that that they looked at is similar to the occupant load of this one, should be reasonable. Well, you're, bo you're both right. You're right. They can't increase the number of children at the center, but the number of parents who pick up or drop off during the peak hour could change. You know, it could change based on the traffic. It could change based on a holiday, you know. So when you've done these studies in the past and you make assumptions based on uh, the performance or the experience of another location, whether it's a daycare or any other, how right are your numbers in, on average? We found over the years that um, with most of the studies that we've done, we always err on the high side. And so usually when we go back and do a post study, we find the traffic to actually be less. Okay. Okay. Good. Feel free to ask any other questions, guys, because you know, the overall you're going to introduce more traffic to the intersection. Mm -hmm. Yes. Does that also correlate to an increase in the risk of an accident happening? Anytime you increase traffic, it increases the oh, risk it? of an accident. A little bit, or is it it's it's a little bit. It's a little bit. Yeah. Is it I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a small percentage. I mean, traffic signals in and of themselves tend to create locations for accidents, especially rear end accidents. I know. Is this helpful? Bill, what was that percent percentage you used? I just didn't. Catch I just it. said under 1%. Okay. Just throwing that out there, and the answer was yes, under 1%. Yeah. Are you. Has this been helpful? Has, uh, yes, uh, very, very helpful. <coughs> okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't, does anybody have any other questions before? I don't want to say they're dismissed, but before they're dismissed. <laughs> I think the big, the big topic is the traffic. Okay. <coughs> Yeah, any other questions before we move on to uh, sketch letter for them? Or, or so I just I just like to state for the record that the consultant that we hired um, agreed. Yes. That, that, that essentially, the most important piece of the TIS is that the gap analysis showed that there are adequate gaps in the traffic during peak times to allow traffic to go in and out of the site um, based on the number of trips. So I, I think that's, um, that's really what we were after when, when we first po you know, expressed our concerns about uh, traffic impact to the applicant when they came with the first sketch plan. Right. So. Okay. All right, so with that, um, again, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Pull back to like kind of the rest of the project and go through our sketch plan process. Then yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, okay. let's go back. Maybe get a strong <coughs> indication. Thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity to come back and talk with you. Thank you. Sorry, Thanks. missed you at the last one, but good you're here. <coughs> okay. All so right. You got thoughts? Go. Yeah. No. I'm. I just. You know, one of the requests that they had at the last meeting was, hey, if this is going to go nowhere, we want to know now, uh, you know, so that we're not investing 
uh, additional resources mm -hmm. and something that is never going to happen. So do <coughs> either both of you feel, you know, both of you said you're on the fence. Mm -hmm. uh, the last time are you still on the fence? Can you see yourself voting for the project based on what you now know? Can you, are you, are you, you know, have, have you fallen off the fence one way or another? So before they answer that question, I'd just like to make one, one other comment, and that is when they first brought the project to us, um, we thought that the density um, might have been a little aggressive for that location, um, and in large part as a function of the traffic uh, at that intersection. Um, and the fact that we expressed that to them and they significantly changed the density and the program at that location um, and uh, that their traffic study um, showed that traffic can be reasonable. I, I think they've addressed the concerns that the board first expressed <coughs> this new application. I just want to get that out on the record as well. Okay, thank you. Well, <coughs> My primary concern was the traffic. Everything else can be managed, I think. Um, and having the study and having it explained, uh, I would be, I'm no longer a fence sitter, let's put it that way. I would be more in favor of this project. Okay. Because of what I just heard. That, okay. That the traffic is manageable. It's not going to be that big of an impact. People aren't going to have five, ten minute wait times to get out into the traffic. It's going to be much, much less than that. So I'm <coughs> no longer on the fence. Okay. How about you? Yeah, I think the the traffic numbers, obviously it changes the times a little bit, but from these numbers, really not that significantly. Um, it's seconds. In some cases, it's maybe, in the worst case, um, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, just in one small window. So I think, you know, we'll see how the site plans developed. I did want to hear a little bit more. There were concerns with the pond. I think at the time we didn't know if it was retention, detention, uh, but I think the, the traffic questions have been answered positively. Mm -hmm. Right, I mean, we haven't, uh, this isn't a question of, uh, at least an absolute, but is it, do you see, do you feel comfortable that we could get to a point where we could approve a project? I think so, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, and you feel yes. the same way, and yeah. you feel the same way, all right. Yeah, there's there's one other thing that I, that I forgot to mention that I, th I think we should get on the record, and that is that, um, in the applicant's most recent communication uh, to the town, uh, they pointed out that, that uh, they did uh, a demographic study for the need for uh, child care in the Penfield area. Um, and according to the study, the, the need is great. So if this is, a, if this is a service that's valuable to the residents of, of the town, then uh, you know, that's a win as well. Right, I, I completely agree, completely agree. Uh, okay, so with that in mind, let's uh, get our thoughts now for the sketch plan letter. And I mean, a lot of them I think are already addressed. I do have, addressed. yeah, we, we've addressed a we lot. We did a lot of that. Uh, I, have gen I have most of those notes already compiled from the previous meeting. Bob, to your point about just obviously clarifying how that Stormwater management facility will be designed eventually. It's, mm -hmm. it's sketch plan, so we don't have that final design right. yet. Right. But at least they're showing this the space that they would need um, to handle the site, which is what we require at this point. Um, as they said, this is a very comprehensive sketch plan application that you're seeing um, in terms of the site plan layout. Um, they identify the number of variances that they would have to seek. Mm -hmm. um, with this project, it is not uncommon for those uh, because yeah, so of the use of the daycare. I guess let's speak to that a little bit right now. I know this is kind of premature for a sketch, but to me, the case was made 
for the variances in terms of setback for the shed, uh, some of those things that to me that made was well, a safety concern. Yeah. yeah, it made perfect sense for, to seek a variance on those types of things and have that located in that spot. And again, it'd be different if it was somebody's house and yard next door, but it's mm -hmm. the school and it's nobody's going in that area anyway. That's a drainage area for the so, school. It's, it's not even a, a recreation area. It's literally just right. land that's maintained for no use by right, students for anybody. or the public. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. So they seem to be making sensible requests and, and decisions on this in, in my view. That's a function of their program. Right. Mm -hmm. so, um, Other than that, the, the comments would be very standard um, mm -hmm. for a sketch letter for site plan specific things, you know, prepare all your uh, engineer's report, drainage reports that you need, uh, air the lighting landscaping plan, so on mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, obviously we already have the traffic information clearly, um, so that's been provided. If you, don't, if you don't already have a note asking the applicant how they intend to address safety around the boundary of the pond, maybe that's a good thing to add. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, other than those Somebody want to move comments, to we can send issue a sketch letter. So moved. I'll second. Very close there, yeah. very close. I'm sorry, that was moved by Burton, Burton, Burton and Bastion. I have my sheet. It's the dynamic duel. <laughs> <laughs> Pesky? Aye. Bastion? Aye. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Okay, is that uh, fair? It does very much, we appreciate it. Okay. We'll see you in a couple of months. All right. All right, moving on. Okay, uh, Bill, you sticking around? I only have a few things. Yep. All right. Fantastic. So, uh, we'll jump back into the order of the application uh, of the agenda. Uh, item number one for the Wilberts application. That is uh, no action this evening. No one has to be recused um, since we do not have uh, Terry here tonight. Yep, you guys are good. Stay planted. Okay. Just going to take a no action and keep it moving. Um, on to item number two, that is uh, Panorama, uh, Panorama Park Development at Panorama Creek mm -hmm. Drive. Um, Panorama Office Park. Correct, yep. And so you had a series, we just got, basically in, in your drop last week, uh, the big ticket items that came in uh, was the draft negative declaration document that we've prepared, as well as a completed full EAF for your consideration. Uh, we also just did a brief recap of uh, some of the items that came in during uh, the time since. Uh, they have provided the revised site plans that were uh, required from both PRC memos and the board's discussions. Uh, for example, the pedestrian easement is uh, now shown in that generic location that we asked for. That could be modified at a future time based on the build out of this project. That's on the plans now. Um, tree protection has been shown around the oak trees that have been identified in both the conservation board's report as well as the PRC's memo about let's preserve these rather than knock them down prematurely. Uh -huh. um, if there is the opportunity to save them through development, we have that. Um, and da, 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 we did receive uh, a memo from the Penfield Trails Committee as well, again, speaking to accessibility through the site. Um, if there are opportunities around Allen's Creek, so on and so forth, this is private property, but uh, we, they have at least shown the intention of providing that pedestrian access through the site, um, while also enhancing, uh, you know, panorama trail as well as a sidewalk down the dedicated road. So, uh, for the development, there's a, a, a fair, there's a good amount of pedestrian accessibility for it, both for people there and around the area, to get to the plaza and the other businesses that are down at Panorama uh, Trail and Penfield Road. Um, those are all of those. The, uh, with regards to traffic on this project, um, I know Jim, you, we, you asked me to take a look at that, just kind of any final comments on that. Um, the final letter we received from our consultant was uh, on May 10th, and that was in response to their, um, their responses to uh, our consultant's initial memo. So we had we had our impact study, our consultant did a review, and we had some responses, and then we had one more 
uh, conclusion letter from our consultant saying that yes, they can provide the adequate gaps for the left turn lanes uh, in to the project site and uh, they were supportive as well as the county DOT was supportive of providing a 200 foot um, turn pocket lane as opposed to the 150 that was proposed initially. Those have all been adjusted um, and on the plans everything's been accommodated for and captured in the negative declaration with regards to traffic, connectivity, uh, I think we have a new applicant. E-pods, we might, we might, we might. How's it going? Welcome to the show. I don't know what's going on. Um, yeah, just again, to recap, the neg deck does go into all those details about the, e the uh, limits of disturbance with regards to the E-pods, buffers to uh, the adjacent uh, zoning districts being residential and general business, um, as well as the manufactured homes. Um, all those things have been accommodated for uh, in the NAG deck. Does anyone have any questions about the contents of the NAG deck that was provided to you? No. no. Any um, questions, concerns, thoughts about this project? Again, it is for a dedicated road and the infrastructure associated with it. It is not for any buildings at this time. Um, and they would start earthwork, general rough earthwork on those pad sites to kind of start painting a picture within those limits of disturbance. Um, any questions about that? No, I think uh, we could entertain a motion to... Uh, there would be three votes tonight yeah. then. Um, the first being accepting the full EAF, then there would be the negative deck, and then mm -hmm. to table the application uh, in right. preparation of an okay. approval resolution. Right. Somebody want to... So we can start, start the roll there. Yeah. <laughs> we'll move to the EAF. Okay. Second. So generous. Petsky? Aye. Bastian? Aye. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye. All right. And I will move to um, accept the negative declaration. A second. Petsky? Aye. Bastian? Aye. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye. All right. So we want a table with uh, instructions to prepare a to draft resolution. I'll second. Petsky? Aye. Bastian? Aye. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Okay. Nothing on. 280 panorama. Uh, that is correct. That item, uh, the only thing that came in was today, and uh, you'll have that in advance of your next meeting. We uh, got a letter from the DPW director with his general concerns at this time for the project, and um, those are just based on information we have now, and as we've stated before, we're still waiting for uh, a bulk of information on this project. So. Um, it would be appropriate to take a simple continued table action on this tonight until we receive everything we've asked for. Okay. Um, somebody want to move, move the table? Yeah, I'll second. Hetsky? Aye. Bastian? Aye. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Okay. Valvoline. Right? Yep, yep. Last night, we're going into our action items now. 1956 Empire Boulevard, it's the existing Valvoline station. Uh, they have provided a letter of intent as well as um, elevations and renderings of proposed modifications to the building facade. Uh, yeah, we can, that one's perfect actually. We'll start with the rendering. Uh, currently, they got a before and after picture here to help paint the picture for you. Uh, on the bottom left is, is the, the current. Is the current, yep. And that building, that the, the bump out you see at the bottom with the glass block on the corner nearest to you in the picture uh, is what's being the, the heaviest modification is changing the, that to what's being uh, shown on the rendering. Uh, colors match what's out there today. They are showing a replacement of the banner sign across the front with awnings and moving the signage to the uh, pillar structure. Uh, squaring that off, it's currently a round corner on that building, and they're going to square that off with that element there. Um, they do know that they're only allowed one sign, and 
Uh, I communicated that to them. They're only going to seek one sign on the building. Otherwise, they go to the zoning board for what's being shown there. Um, so which side would that be on then? I'm gonna the assume. I'm, I'm going with the front. Yeah, uh, it would be the, the front, the facing front? Empire Boulevard. Okay. That's because you do it. There's a monument sign out front as well, uh, existing, so they do have visibility from the front for traffic going Are up those and down. awnings lit from within Fair or something? question. No. No. They Are they metal? Yes. Standing scene. And uh, let's see here. Could you go back to the front view drawing, Doug, that you had? So, and then they're doing just a minor treatment um, to the trim on the left side of the building there as well, where you see that too. That wasn't proposed to be squared off on the corner there, on the on left, left side? On the left side, um, no, due to the fact that that driveway is already tight and narrow to. That's what I thought. So that structure on the right is that a new 14 by 14 structure it's replacing what's that, there it's replacing what's it's there. extending what's there. black it's, it's, okay i see all right got it so there's no there. increase so in square foot to the building footprint a very minor increase due to that Current curved. Curved. okay okay curves like well, yeah, got it. Yeah. kind of square it off yeah Ooh, the picture you had was perfect. that might justify a fireman with that statement <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't do it. We're going to lose some I'm green. I'm sure you do. <laughs> going to lose some green space there. Um, the other element, and, and again, all the, the colors and materials have been documented on that, um, the plan drawing we just saw showing that corner detail. Um, they've all been identified there. The last thing I was going to highlight is that they are providing a new dumpster enclosure around what is currently not an enclosed dumpster situation okay. um, with a uh, wood fence material. Other than that... Will the building sign be let? The new building sign on the on the tower structure? Yes. Yeah. How? It would be backlit. Okay. Anybody have any concerns, questions? No. I think that's a nice improvement. Okay. Somebody want to move it? So Nobody? <laughs> oh. I'll second. Well, everybody jump Great. in. Sorry, Burton, 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 Burton Bastion. Nobody wants their name in the minutes. <laughs> Hetsky? Hi. Hi. Bastion? Aye. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye. So I'll be in touch with a letter documenting all this for you, and then uh, next step would be applying for the building permit. Very good. Thanks for your time. All sure. Right. Thanks Thank for you. coming in. Okay. Any other business we need to address? Uh, nope. We have one item for June public hearing. It's uh, at Presbyterian Church. Actual Presbyterian, Presbyterian Church on Jackson Road. There we go. I always forget which key goes before. That's right around the curve, right? Yep, yep right around the yep. curve there. Uh, Heritage Christian Services is proposing a new group home, so it would be a uh, two-lot subdivision for a new uh, residential home. And we will see that hmm. in June. Just don't ask me any questions. I'm just showing you now as a teaser. So that's where it would go. Watch okay. the trailer. No questions. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> I know you're uh, excited about this one, but you're just going to have to keep my <laughs> lip zip. Settle down. Zip my lip. Other than that, okay. nothing left. All right. No further business. We will adjourn. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Have a great Memorial Day. Oh, yes. We'll do the same. And, uh,